What's happening, YouTubes? This is Hayes Anderson. I wanted to show you this Asaki oscillator that I just put together. Maybe you're here because you were doing some research on the Asaki oscillator. Maybe you were trying to put one together and you couldn't quite get it to work. Well, maybe I can help, hopefully. I'm going to leave a couple links below in the description of two videos that you should check out if you haven't already seen them. Let's see. So here is the actual circuit, and it's a very, very simple circuit. This is so cool. It's actually just ridiculously amazing. Uh, the first time I tried to put this together didn't work. The second time didn't work. It's pretty funny how simple it is but yet how hard it can be to put this thing together. Now I can't really explain to you how to put it together per se but uh, suffice to say just keep trying and just be very careful that you get your polarity correct because you can blow the capacitors if you're not careful and if you don't use a proper uh, resistor you can blow out the transistors. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so I have seven different transistors, and these are the, the, the model numbers. I'm going to put all of these in the description as well. Up here I have three different capacitors. So the first one I'm going to use a 10, a 2.2, and a 0.22 microfarad, and the second time I'm going to switch those out. Uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead and work our way up. So I'm going to start with the 10 microfarad and go across these different transistors. We have an S9014, A42, and so forth. I'll explain those later. Moving on to the 2.2 microfarad capacitor. And finally, the 0.22 microfarad. quite high pitched. So hopefully this sort of demonstrates what the values of capacitance do. The more capacitance, the lower the frequency. But what about the different transistors? Well, basically I just had a bunch of transistors and I wanted to try out the ones, you know, just I wanted to see which ones would work. Out of the ones that I tried, for the most part, only NPN type transistors worked. For the PNP, I definitely swapped the polar polarity around. So that was not the issue there. It's just they don't do the trick for whatever reason. They probably can, but the voltage may need to be different. I really don't know. But for right now, I'm just going with what works with this particular circuit. So one thing I should point out is that the circuit has to have at least 12 volts to run. I'm currently running from these two batteries about 17 volts through this circuit. Now, honestly, I think that's a bit too much. That's pretty high voltage. And I think that's probably one of the, the first cons about this particular circuit is that it runs at a particularly high voltage and I did blow out two transistors and cause some sparks to come out my breadboard and I blew an LED but whatever that was my fault the reason why I blew the transistors was because when I wired in the potentiometer which I'll show in a second I didn't wire it in series I wired it in parallel across the main resistor here which actually decreased the amount of resistance and when I cranked the potentiometer all the way to, the, to the, the least amount of resistance, it caused too much voltage, I'm guessing, to go into the transistor, or maybe currents. I'm not really sure. I'm still learning, like, as I said. Oh, by the way, did I mention, don't do any of this at home. Okay, so going forward, before I swap out the capacitors, I do want to demonstrate a little bit with the, the variable potentiometer here. So for this particular uh, transistor, which is the middle one, which is the, I believe, the S8050, I get the full range. But if I move over to something like this guy next to him, well, let's try the A4, A42. Watch what happens when I go down. I'll hit a threshold where it'll just stop. Right there. And I still got all that extra resistance to go through. So... This particular potentiometer is not rated too well for this particular circuit with this transistor. I would need a potentiometer, I believe, that provided less resistance. And I have no idea what this potentiometer is rated at. I'm just using what I have at my disposal, which is what is so cool about this circuit. It's so easy to put together. Just be careful because, remember, you're running at least 12 volts, probably about 17 if you hook up to double eight, I mean, two 9-volt batteries like this. Okay. Pardon me. I'm going to swap out now. Before I do that... Let's talk about these red circles. 
What do these mean? Well, for this to work, you do not use the middle leg on the transistor, which is the base. What I found is, is that some of these transistors are very unstable if you touch the base. So for example, the 2N222. But the 2N551 is very stable. When I touch the base on it, it doesn't change. However, the next one, the 2N3904, when I touch the base on it, it distorts. Same with the S8050. Sorry, I jumped one. That was the S9013. Here's the S8050. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, but the A42? Nothing. The S9014? Nothing. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you actually wire these in, you probably want to cut the legs off as look mum no computer suggests in his video. However, what I think would be really cool is to wire the leg outside of whatever enclosure you're going to put your circuit into and make it available as a performance kind of feature. It actually is kind of cool, especially this guy. That's some really nice kind of phase distortion almost. Okay, let's swap out these capacitors for higher value ones. So once again, the highest was a 0.22. In the middle, I had a 2.2 and then a 10. So now I'm going to use a 100, a 220, and a 470. Wish I had some music playing right now. It's very important that you have the polarity on these caps set up correctly because you do not want them to explode. Now, while I'm double checking what I did for any silly blunders, I would like to add that in terms of everything else, the other sort of uh, what you need to watch out for, of course, is your, your output. You don't want to blow any speakers with this, so you want to be careful and use something that you feel is safe. Like, for example, I'm kind of terrified to hook this into my mixer right now. I do have a couple $30 mixers, and I might be more inclined to sort of like gain stage, sort of so, so to speak, in case something happened. I don't know. You never know. But uh, these transistors, uh, they might, if you run too much uh, voltage, as I said before, because you're using like um, the wrong resistance here, or like too low of a resistance, you could burn them out, which just means that you, you know, you burn one out. But it's not going to explode or anything like that. But these guys, you'll be very careful of. Okay, so now that I've got my new potentiometers, and let's check them out. Excuse me, my new capacitors. So this time I'm going to start with the highest one, uh, the 100. cool, huh? Here's the 220 and the 470. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go really, really, really slow oscillations. Okay, before we wrap this up, what do these two arrows right here mean? Well, the waveform that is produced by this circuit is a sawtooth. And what I've discovered, I think, not that I haven't discovered it, but what I've noticed is that they're all pretty much ramped down with the exception of the A42 and the 2N5551. They ramp up, and I'll see if I can demonstrate this for you. So I'm going to tune up the A42 here, the low one. Tune it down, actually. And hopefully you can see in the LED how it's actually increasing from nothing to the highest intensity. It's ramping up as opposed to the S9013. So it's very intense and it's actually kind of like discharging from the top down. This one's kind of slowly illuminating up. Same behavior with the 2N5551, but I got to tune it way down, I think, so that if we can see it. Well, you can kind of see it there. There, there, there. It's going there. That's pretty good. Haha, look at that. We hit the threshold. So again, this potentiometer is too too much resistance for the 2N5551. Okay, well that's it. Uh, if you put this together, I wish you the best of luck. 
Again, don't do this at home, though, because it's very dangerous. It's not that dangerous. But do be careful, though. Be very, very careful if you're dealing with, like, much over, like, you know, in the 18-volt range. Uh, and that's about all that I have for you. This has been really fun. I hope to do more of this in the future. And thanks for joining my DIY adventures. And, again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments, and I'll do my best to help you out.